If you've ever heard of luminosity masking, I think you're gonna like this video because it's kind of like color luminosity masking in a way where we're gonna be working with specific colors, but also a little bit of luminance as well. And uh, we've got some very creative ways that we can do this. Folks, my name is Matt Kleskowski and welcome to the latest video. In this one, what we're gonna do is we're going to, we're gonna kind of work with the sky, but the sky is only one color. It could easily be any color in the photo as you'll see. Um, we're gonna work with the sky and use some creative ways to boost some colors. As I'll mention in the video, there's a lot of different ways to do this stuff. This is just one and it's kind of a little bit more creative, gives you access to a couple of different features inside of Photoshop um, if you really wanna get technical about how you're editing your photos. Let's go ahead and get started. And as you can see here, I have a layer open in Photoshop. So essentially what we're gonna do is you might have heard the term luminosity masking and, and whether you know or don't know what it is in in simplest terms luminosity masking is a a selection of the luminance of the photo well we're going to do something similar but we're going to kind of do color luminosity masking where we're really going to make a selection of a color in the photo but the concept's exactly the same that's all luminosity masking uh, at its core is so we're going to go up here to the select menu and go down here to color range and we want to make a selection of the blues. And could you do this with hue and saturation and all different? Of course you could. You could do it a lot of different ways. I like this way. It gives me a lot of power, um, especially if you want to get creative and, and control it a little bit more. So what we're going to do here is you're going to come up to the top area where it says select uh, sampled colors. And uh, you're going to click on that little eyedropper. And then we're just going to go over the photo and then just click in a blue area. Black is not selected. White is selected. All right, so in this case, we've selected a little bit, but if I hold the shift key down and click in another blue area and in another blue area and in another blue area and maybe even up here, now I've opened that selection up quite a bit. Now, I could also control the fuzziness, which is kind of the, the how much, you know, how much leeway that selection has to go find other colors. So I usually keep it pretty low. Range range could basically looks if you bring it all the way down, it shows you the places that I clicked and how far outside of those do you want it to go. I don't want it to go anywhere outside of those. So our, our I, I've already controlled that with my fuzziness, so I'm not going to mess with range. I leave it as 100 percent. OK, so at this point, we all these white areas are selected. The black areas are not even if it's not perfect, um, you're still going to be able to control this in a minute. So don't, don't worry too much about it. So we'll come down here and uh, we'll go and click OK. This is gonna leave us with a selection, okay? So now that we got a selection, we got the marching ants going on here, all we have to do is press Command or Control J. That puts it up onto its own layer. Usually Command or Control J will duplicate the layer, but if you have a selection active, it will uh, put everything up onto its own layer just like it did here. So if you look at that layer, that's kind of what we got going on. All right, so from here, we're gonna have a little bit of fun with it. Before we have fun with it, I gotta pay the bills. Uh, if you like getting creative and, and having having some creative flexibility with your photos, um, we have something called a, a 3D color lookup table in Photoshop. We also have something called a profile inside of Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. Heck, they even work in, in On One and Luminar too. But I've got a free pack if you go to mattk.com slash LUTS, L-U-T-S. Uh, I've got a free pack that you can download and try out. And then um, there's a big sale and discount on my, uh, my pack that you can buy. And uh, it basically works in all these different programs. And their profiles, their LUTs, their profile is a lot. They're the same thing. And in fact, I'll, I'll put a link to a, a video that I have in the description that can go over that. But if you like to get creative, have some fun with it. Go check them out. Back to our story. So essentially, we now have a color luminance mask of sorts on a layer. Okay, it's not on a mask, but it doesn't matter. We can still control it. That's on its own layer. So what we're going to do here is we're going to double click right on that layer thumbnail. It's going to open up the layer style dialog box. We're going to go over to color overlay. And by default, it's probably going to be set to normal. And the opacity will probably be at 100% on you. So we're going to change this to a blue color. You can go through here and adjust it. We're going to change it to a blue color. And we're going to change our blend mode. I use usually use overlay and soft light for these two um, or for one of these. It's going to be too intense. And that's where we've reduced the opacity. Okay. 
you can give the other ones a try. Again, guys, there's no rules to this. This is more of a creative, fun way um, to work with color inside of Photoshop, and it gives you a lot of different options, but the number one thing you have to understand about doing things like this is th there are no rules. You, you could be, your photo could be different. The the, the blues could be totally, you know, could be a bright day and maybe a uh, different blend mode works just fine for you. Okay, and at this point now we can go in here and we can control what we selected there, all right? Kind of bring that down there. You can see, turn the opacity. If I turn the preview off and then on, you can see what it's doing. All right, so you can see the areas that it's selected. Again, experiment, maybe soft light works in a little bit different way. To me, soft light brings back a little bit of the original clouds that were in there. So that might be the better way to go with this. Um, there's some pink that was lost up there, but I kind of like it. I like the addition of a little bit more blue because some of those areas, the sunset really fizzled. So some of those areas for me got a little bit too gray rather than holding all this color right at twilight, which I love it when it happens, but it just, it didn't necessarily happen on this one. All right, and then the other thing that you can do is we can go over here to blending options and uh, and you can experiment. Um, if we go over here and you hold down your option or alt key, you can kind of split this and this will, if you hold down option or alt, see how it splits those sliders and it'll start to bring back a little bit more of those original clouds and color. So experiment a little bit with that too. There's Again, there's no rule to this one because there is so many different skies and directions that it can go. I just wanna give you some, some areas of flexibility. All right, click okay. All of that is on its own layer. And as I mentioned before, because it's on its own layer, you could use your eraser tool if you're not familiar with layer masking and erase it away from areas you don't want it to affect. If you're familiar with layer masking, you could of course add a layer mask to that layer and erase it away that way. But before and after now we, uh, we really have some access and uh, a way to attack the blues in the photo and you could extrapolate this to the reds and the oranges and whatever other colors in your photo. And, uh, and you can really have a lot of creative freedom with what you're doing here inside of Photoshop. So hope you guys enjoyed that one. Again, check out the website at mattk.com slash LUTs. If you want to uh, check out some Pretty cool presets that can give you a lot more creative freedom with your photos as well. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll talk to you again real soon.